Hi, welcome to another installment of the Increase Your Developer Productivity with Tmux series. In this episode, I'm going to go over the send keys command. This is a Tmux command where you can send commands to other window panes while still staying in that one pane, or you can send commands to other windows. I mostly use it, I think you're mostly going to use it to send commands to other window panes. This way you can stay in your text editor and, for example, send over your test to the other window pane. That way you can see all of the output uh, on that window pane as you're still working in your editor. Um, what a wonderful feature this is. I use it all the time. This is one of the great fundamentals, I think, of Tmux, is being able to see output in a window while still working in that environment you're in. Let's take a closer look now. Okay, let me open up an already existing session. And uh, let me close this down, make a session first. And we'll close it down, clear out the screen. So the tmux send key, keys command is simply a tmux send hyphen keys there. There's a t, which is a target command. So we'll go t right, that's still going to be the right pane. And let's launch grunt watch here. Okay, so it did send the command over here. Actually, I had a already a grunt watch command there. So let me go back and do this again. So it's tmux send keys, target right, grunt watch, and it puts the command in there. But it does not run the command. It just puts the grunt watch there without hitting enter. So to do enter, we would go to the end of this here and do C hyphen M. And then that'll run the enter command. And then we have uh, over there on the right pink grunt watch waiting. So why is this useful? Well, I think it's pretty self-explanatory. I mean, you can see the output of the grunt watch. But let's just say I was working on grunt watch itself. So if I went into the grunt file and I was doing some work here, um, just on grunt watch specifically, testing some, here's some grunt watch stuff here. I'm not actually going to modify anything, but what I can do is I, I could be working in this over here on Vim on the left side and I can test the watch command. So to do that, let me go to my uh, in Vim the command line here. I'm going to do tmux send keys target right. Now I need to stop the grunt watch command and that's control C. So that would be capital C hyphen lowercase c in, in single quotes here, I'm just going to run the grunt watch. And then I'm going to do the enter command here that I just displayed. So I'm making a, a edit to the grunt file. I can then go over and test what I do. It'll first stop grunt watch and then over, over there on the right side, then it starts grunt watch again. And I'm still I still stayed in the left side here. I'm still in the text editor. Uh, let's say I make another change, then I can go back and run the tmux send keys that I just ran, which stops grunt watch and then starts grunt watch. So it's great. I can see the output, see if there's any errors, and I make any errors when I um, edited the, the, the grunt file here. Now how about sending to another window, not just window pane on the same window? Uh, to do that, let's uh, let me shut down Grunt Watch here, and I'm just going to send over Control C over there and shut down. You can see over there it's now shut down. Now to send to another window, let me go to the second window here, and I have a left uh, again a vertical split, 
and a left and right pane. So let me go back into here. Now to do that, what I would do instead at the target switch here is to do two, which is window number two dot, let's just say left. And I want to start grunt watch there. I don't need to run the control C. So let's go over here and see what happened. There we go. There's grunt watch running in the second window on the left window pane. There's also a top and bottom um, commands that you could run depending on how your window panes were set up here in the second window. Now the T the, the TMUX and keys command is so important to me that I made a let me shut down grunt watch there is I made a alias to it. Um, actually it's a bash function. Let me show that. To you, it uh, so that when I just do ts command from bash, it will do a tmux send keys target right um, control enter there, and uh, I highly recommend that you also uh, do this. And I will have uh, links on the article to my some of my bash shortcuts, my bash aliases. In this case, it's a it's a function, and uh, let's use it here. I'm giving a demonstration. So I just do a TS. Let me run. I'm going to run into the AG command. That's the silver searcher. It's an excellent tool. Recommend that. Let me uh, look inside the code base for SAS. Okay, so over here on the, the right side there that it did a search for SAS. Didn't find anything, but uh, there is, this TS function in Bash is a little limited, though. Like, if I were going to do um, something like this, I was going to search for SAS um, plugins or something, and I was using quotes, this will not come out right. Um, also, because it needs to be an AG command here. It doesn't get escaped properly. Uh, what you would have to do in that case is to actually escape these lines and then you'll get that output better. And that's using, again, that bash function. If you use the send keys command, you will not have that problem. Lastly, let me display some sort of real world stuff where I, I find uh, the send keys especially helpful. And to do that, let me detach this session and uh, let's do, let's open up one of my other projects, QuickBooks Ruby. And here I have um, set up in my in Vim a leader command that will run tests in the right pane just by hitting leader command RL. And you see on the right command, I'm running specs right there in uh, the right side panel. And it's, it, it's, again, just so useful to have the applet, especially when there's errors that you can read and look at. So while you're over here working on your code, you can see exactly what that error was. You can search through um, other files where that error may be. And having that always that output available statically to you helps eliminate that context switching, which as developers, we're trying to you know, reduce as much as possible to stay focused on our task. Also, Let's take a look at the Git window here. Um, I have a couple, a little change here. Now let's say I was going to make a git commit here. And I'm using aliases here. GCA means git commit all. And um, I'm here at my commit message and I'm like, what? I'm going to even up these windows too here. Oops. There, I'm going to even up those two windows window panes and I kind of forget what I did exactly. I can go over, I'm going to use my shortcut TS command and GD is another alias but that's just git diff 
and I can see exactly what I changed in this commit. So I don't have to get out of the editor window that I just got in where I'm going to write my git commit message. I can see over here on the right pane the, the changes that are going in this commit. And I, I would usually have more commits and I can uh, switch over to the right pane and, and see what those commits are so I can write my commit message. And there's just so many useful things for the send keys command. Uh, something you really want to leverage as you're trying to increase your productivity in Tmux. So there you go. There is the fundamentals of the Tmux send keys command. So go out and use it. And thanks for watching this episode.